Hello beautiful people, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, this is my first video in my 30s. We like? Yeah, we like. <laughs> now if you've watched my introductory video to these whistles, you'll notice that I reviewed or uh, gave my first opinions and first impressions on the three nickel whistles that I got from Kalani. I also, in the meantime, have ordered some brass Kalani whistles. Now, if you do order the pouch, this is the pouch that comes with the Kalani whistle. It's cushioned, it's soft, it's quite sturdy. It also has a, a little belt loop here, so you can stick it on the side of your trousers or put a belt of some sort through there and put it across you, a bit like a quiver from archery, anything along those lines. But this is how it comes if you order one with a cushion pouch. With regard to size of whistles, I have an E flat, a C and a D in the nickel. As you can see, the mouthpieces are of various different sizes. This is the E flat, this is the D and this is the C. So the C definitely has the largest mouthpiece by some way. The whole top and I mean, everything about it is larger, heavier, etc. than the smaller, higher key whistles. Um, but then the whistle itself is larger in general. So if I can show you the three together, lengthwise, the C whistle is on top, the D whistle is in the middle, and the E flat whistle is on the bottom. Now lengthwise from top to bottom, the C whistle, I'll try and give you in centimetres, is approximately 33 centimetres long. D whistle is 30 centimetres long and the E flat whistle is about 27 and a half centimetres long. I do have the mouthpieces pushed down on these so that gives you an idea of size. Now aesthetically obviously the whistles are exactly the same other than the fact that one has a nickel body and the other has a brass body. Hopefully that picks up on camera. It means one is all gold coloured and one has a gold top and a silver bottom. So um, these are the C whistles. The bores are obviously wider than, for example, the D whistles. As I've had the nickel whistles out of the packaging for a longer time, so they're slightly older, um, the brass head is darker than the new brass head that has arrived. So this is the older whistle with a slightly darker colour. This is the newer whistle, which is lighter. Everything is exceptionally well made. The head joints, although heavier on the larger whistles, aren't noticeably heavy on the smaller whistles, and you do get over that the more you play them. It's just an initial thing. When they first arrive, they're a little heavy top end. The mouthpieces are exceptionally well made. The design is beautiful. The finish is exceptional. They are wonderful quality whistles. They are the best quality whistles that I own. Craftsmanship really is superb. They tarnish slightly when they uh, do get a little bit of use. The colour changes a little, but as you can see, I've played these for the last month or so and they haven't changed all that much from my original review. The brass ones will change, I would imagine, a little more quickly, but I've literally only just got these out of the pouch. So for the scent sample.
So that is a selection of sound samples between the brass and nickel D and C whistles, and you guys will have heard the E flat whistle on my sort of intro video to these Kalani whistles. If you haven't watched that video, there will be a link um, here, so you guys can watch that one now, and I'll also put links at the end of the video. My opinions on these are as follows. The pros. The pros of the brass whistle. Nice, smooth sounding whistle. Easy to play throughout the octaves, and a very nice, high third octave D note, easy to reach and very easy to play. It is loud, it sounds wonderful if you give it a good bit of air, the craftsmanship is fantastic, the sound is lovely and warm and rich, and uh, yeah, that goes for the C and the D. With regard to the nickel whistles, the sound is crisper, clearer, a little louder than the brass, um, a little bit more chirpy as well, slightly more shrill on the higher notes and they are difficult to reach. Um, slightly more difficult than the brass, they're not difficult in general, but slightly more difficult than the brass. Again, fantastic craftsmanship. I do prefer the look of this whistle for aesthetics, but sound-wise I do actually prefer the brass. Both brass and nickel are nice and clear and loud sounding whistles. Um, they'd be great for playing with other instruments. Not as good for practice because they are quite loud, but on the brass in particular you can get a good range of volume. You can play a little more softly and a little more um, forcefully as well. The brass whistle would be better if you're planning to play softer music in general, perhaps if you're looking for slow airs or, um, yeah, slow tunes, I would recommend the brass. If you're going for jigs and reels and anything upbeat, I would recommend the nickel. The C whistles are good quality sturdy whistles. Um, the sound on these is, again, similar to the D whistles. The tuning range on these is exceptional. The difference in note range that you can get on the bottom note with these amazing tuning slides is really, really impressive and really incredible. You could tune with any instrument with one of these. Very, very useful, no matter what key you're in. The bell note and the cross finger notes are strong on the sea whistles as well. Although the cross fingering note is a little weaker than on the D whistles. So for example, So if you're planning on getting a sea whistle, you may wish to consider half holding the top hole rather than cross fingering. As for the little E flat, it is actually my favourite of the keys of Kalani whistles. Um, it feels a little bit more like it's in proportion, so I think, I don't know, the notes sound clearer and crisper and more together. There's not as much of a difference, for example, between the cross fingering and the bell note. It's a little stronger, so it doesn't sound quite as uh, different. So you don't need to half hold the top note on this one, you can cross finger. Again, easy to get into the second octave. As for the third octave, it's nice and clear on this as well. Easy third octave D on the C whistles as well. I do find third octave D a lot more difficult on the D and C nickel than the D and C brass. As far as I know, the only complaint I've ever heard about Kalani whistles is due to clogging, and that is when people are playing them, the mouthpiece clogs relatively quickly, and they find themselves having to expel all the moisture in some way, and that does affect the playability of these instruments to some extent. So, um, in the carrying instructions it does say about cleaning these with um, soapy water. Also, I've got a whole video on how to stop clogging, which you'll see just up here, <laughs> but that will give you some advice on how to get the most out of these whistles and some techniques that you can use to stop these clogging, allowing you to play for hours and hours and hours. If you do have um, a slightly reserved style of playing, then this might not be the whistle for you. You do need to put 
a fair amount of force and air into these whistles to get the best sound out of them. They're not as good for practice because they're quite loud if you do want to keep things quiet for your neighbours, then these aren't particularly great, but they are great for playing music well. So in general, my marks on these whistles would be a solid 9 out of 10. And the reason I've not given 10 out of 10, which these whistles very well deserve, but there is one, one tiny little problem that I have. I like the fact that these tuning slides have a little marker. That is amazing. That is a really cool thing. You know where the centre of your whistle is. I like that, Kalani. My only pet peeve with these whistles is that there is no indication whatsoever on the whistle of what key you're playing in. I know that's fine if you can just play the bass note and you have a tuner or you have another instrument to hand that can tell you what key this whistle is in. Or if you buy one key of whistle and it's a D, that's fine. You know what key of whistle your Kalani whistle is. But if you're like me and you have a selection of nickel Kalani whistles, I know which one's the C, it's huge, but the D and the E flat, they look practically the same. The length is, I mean, slightly different, but very similar. And if I actually lengthen my E flat all the way out, then uh, that, that is the difference. The top one is the E flat, the bottom one is the D. So I would appreciate if you're listening, <laughs> just a little marker of a D or an E flat somewhere on the whistle, that would be the 10 out of 10 for me. So that is it for my Kalani review. Don't forget, if you do want to check these whistles out yourselves, I have put some links in the description. This video is not sponsored. Um, I don't get anything if you click those links. This is just for you guys so you know where to shop. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the bell notification down below. Check out my first impressions video here and um, some other awesome videos here. I was playing Dunmore Lassies and um, a little bit of Concerning Hobbits, two of my favourites, so I'll put those here. And I'll put the clogging video here as well. So yeah, that is it from me until... what day are we on? Tuesday until next week. Happy whistling and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.